Yeah, and and I think you you mentioned earlier culture. It seems like there is such a such a unique and distinct culture to the game, and I, I want to dive a little into that right now. It, if you, right now the the way we're experiencing soccer in America is very different than even just 10 years ago, let alone, you know, 20, 30, 30 years ago, we see the rise of the NWSL and the women's game. Of course, our women's national team every year on the international level, you know, with the Olympics and FIFA is just at a high level. Our men's team now we're all excited, obviously for the world cup to watch them here in a couple of weeks. Talk a little bit, like, was there a tipping point where the leaders of the United States, you know, yourself at the youth level and then, and then beyond, was there a moment, was there a tipping point at some time recently where you guys got together and said, Hey, we need to address the culture of soccer in America. We need to make it sexier. We need to make it cool. We need to make it more, you know, ingrained in the fabric of our culture. Like, was there a conscious effort or you just think it's been just with time and with excitement, like anything else, it's just kind of played a natural course to where we are today. You know, I'm, I'm sure those who are in leadership positions would like to be able to put their hands up and say, oh, yeah, that was a conscious decision. But the reality, it has to be an organic growth. And realistically, I mean, again, back when I played in the NASL, we played in football stadiums. And when I played with the Rowdies, we played in what I guess where they called it the Sombrero, 80,000 people. And so even if you had a good crowd, it was like you were playing in a scrimmage. But right. what ended up happening is with, with Major League Soccer and, and Don Garber made some really great moves by, by forcing a lot of the teams to create soccer-specific stadiums. You know, it started in Columbus with the crew, and now almost every team is playing playing in a soccer specific stadium. And if they're not, I mean, like Atlanta, they're playing where the Falcons play, but they sell out every game as well. So what it does is it, it, it enables, you know, by, by having a, a sellout crowd, you get that emotional fervor. You know, you can really feel it. You can hear it. You can sense it throughout the stadium. And then when you start to put teams in, in kind of the same locations, like you have with Portland and Seattle and Vancouver, you create those, um, those rivalries, you know, not necessarily by design, but just because it's, it's close in proximity. And that starts to mirror what you see in Europe. You know, we get we get conversations all the time. Well, you should you should create player development pipelines like we have in Holland or England or Germany. Well, that's great. But those countries are the size of Delaware. And so, you know, for us to be able to do it, we have to almost Americanize it. But the leagues have done very well to be able to create that sense of passion by geography by having teams close together and, 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 and number of fans that can get in. So I think organically it's, it's really taken hold. And you bring up an interesting point because I see it where I live here in Charlotte, just a, uh, just this past year, the Charlotte FC uh, the MLS expansion team that we got a couple of years ago, just played their inaugural season. They play it at the Panthers stadium where the Carolina Panthers NFL team plays. They get tremendous crowds it is a buzz. They had a really good year considering they were an expansion team. They'd like just missed the playoffs by a game or so at the end of the year. Like, but you could feel the energy of soccer change. When you mentioned like it has to come organically through the, the youth soccer scene here in Charlotte, it, again, in my just novice experience and, and, and limited exposure to it is growing because there is a soccer excitement in the air through the professional team. Is, is that something that you guys at the youth level, obviously you recognize, is that a conscious effort to say, Hey, where, where we have some of these big MLS or NWSL franchises, like we can kind of ride their coattails a little bit on the youth scene and play off some of that, some of that excitement and some of that emotion. Is, is that a fair statement? Yeah, very fair. You know, and again, the aspirational impact of sport, you know, has to be there. You know, if you don't, as any, as any kid, you know, many kids realize at, at a certain age that they're not going to end up playing in, as a as a professional. They just want to play for social reasons, for fun, you know, to get out and have exercise, whatever whatever it might be. But there will be kids that that clearly get that passion, but they also realize internally they have the skills. But they want to know what's the insp inspirational and aspirational elements to be able to fulfill those dreams. And so having in the United States, you have NWSL, which is doing you know incredibly well at this point, MLS certainly, and even USL with its it, both on the men and women's side. Now you have franchises in all different size communities. So you know we spent a lot of time in Colorado 
Colorado Springs when I was with some of the other NGBs. And the switchback now in Colorado for the USL has a great following of seven or 8,000 a game. But again, you get it's such a tight stadium that you just get that feel, whether it's there or whether it's in Charlotte, you know, it's the same. 